Min Lee. In and out or five guys? In and out. Uh, yeah. Really? In and out? Yeah. I'll that was a really easy it. answer for you. It is. It is. Yeah. Can you tell me why? Well, my kids love it, so my family loves it. That's so, a good answer. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good that's answer. My, that's my answer. That's a good answer, actually. How do you like your In-N-Out burger? Uh, double, double. Yeah. Do you yeah. get chilies on it? I do. I do. <laughs> that's the only way. It's so much better than everything else. Yep. Welcome to Season 2 of 10 Questions with 10 Pastors, brought to you by Gateway Seminary, with your host, Tyler Sanders. This episode was recorded live at the SBC in Anaheim. This is another episode of 10 Questions with 10 Pastors. I'm Tyler Sanders, Director of Communications at Gateway Seminary. I'm here with Min Lee, who is lead pastor of Los Angeles City Baptist Church. Yeah? Yes. And that right. is in, as its name says, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. actually yeah. in L.A. How close are you to downtown L.A.? We're about three miles away. Uh, we're in the neighborhood of Boyle Heights. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And you're also a Gateway grad and a Gateway student. Yes. Got your right. MDiv. In 2020, mm -hmm. a COVID grad, and your current demon student. Yep. What's your? Uh, do you know what your demon project is going to be on? Uh, it's going to be on uh, making disciples um, within a local church context. Okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, why don't you give me a real answer here? Pass the in and out five guys question. Why don't you tell me how you became a Christian? So I became a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home, mm -hmm. uh, but when I uh, just personally accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior was around when I was 13 years old. A junior high student um, and it was at a, a youth retreat and okay. there was a missionary that came from Costa Rica to share the gospel with us really? and then he, he he shared us shared with us about the love of Christ about the fact that we have fallen into sin there's payment of sin but Christ died in our place and he rose again so that we could have eternal life in him so I, I believed in Jesus and I accepted uh, I was repenting of my sins I was praying and as I was praying um, like people would pray for me and as, I, as they're praying they would say like man I think there's a calling in your life mm. to travel around the world speak multiple languages and, and wow. share the gospel so from the very beginning of like my salvation walk with Christ um, I think God has been planting a seed to do some sort of missions work or cross-cultural mm. ministry which is the church that we're in right now yeah tell us about your church a little bit so it's an interesting story. Los Angeles Baptist Church has a long history going all the way back to 1930s. It's a Hispanic church um, that has a long standing within the community for right. like close to 100 years. Um, they were without a pastor because the, the former pastor passed away mm. and um, they're looking for a pastor. But long story short, uh, I was visiting this church and got into um, I was making relationships with uh, with uh, members, and then they were asking me to lead Bible studies, mm -hmm. share my testimony, pray, lead hymns. And yeah. um, as I was doing that, eventually the church asked me, could you be our pastor? Wow. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm Asian American, I'm Korean American, grew up in Orange County. Yeah. Uh, but somehow God led me to be the pastor of a <laughs> Hispanic church in yeah. Los Angeles. So recently um, we've been, I, I've been preaching in Spanish. So that's been a wow. new experience this year, and God's been blessing that, and, and we are, we are, we are, I'm just learning as I go. That's impressive. That's great. Well, actually, I have some preaching questions for you. Okay. So big picture, how are you planning like a sermon series? How far out are you planning sermons? Um, I try to plan out at least a series um, going a few months ahead. Okay. Um, and then I try to prepare my sermon, at least like the, the, the skeleton of the sermons, uh, about a month ahead as well. Okay. So, yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about that process, like your week-to-week -week kind of development of a sermon? Normally, we go through books of the Bible. Okay. Um, so we, we do expository preaching through books of the Bible. Right now, we're on the book of Genesis. Um, so we just finished on Genesis 15, and we, I try to find, like, a main theme of that passage uh -huh. in a way that's relatable uh, to, to the context that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'll, I'll, I'll teach on that um, theme as we go through uh, the verses of the Scripture. Yeah. And now tell me one more thing about that, mm -hmm. because I'm intrigued that you're you're preaching in Spanish now. Mm -hmm. So are you writing your sermon in one language and then translating it? Yes. How are you doing that? Yeah, so my Spanish is not fluent yet, so I'm still learning. Yeah. So I usually write out a manuscript in English, mm -hmm. and then I translate it. And so the sermons right now, it's bilingual. So I, <laughs> right. I, I will say something in English and then translate myself oh, really? in, into Spanish. Wow. Um, You're doing it yourself? Doing so I'm doing yourself? it myself for now. Um, eventually, we'll probably have to go into two services with English and Spanish. So that, that's the plan. But for now, yeah, um, yeah we, we're a small church, so with the remitted limited resources, that's how we're handling um, 
the, the target groups. That That's fantastic. Really That's a good challenge to take on. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, what would you say is the most difficult passage or topic you've had to preach on? Um, or you've gotten to preach on? I shouldn't make it sound like you had to preach on it. To be honest, I'm not sure about the most difficult passage. Yeah. But I do try to be faithful to um, having that overflowing, like flow of the Bible. So oh, yeah. going, going through uh, books of the Bible without skipping chapters or yeah. skipping like hard passages. Um, so there has been challenges in that sense, but it didn't feel like a challenge actually. It's, you mm -hmm. know, I, the, the Bible is the word of God. Uh, so we want our people to know uh, God's word and it is it's a high priority for us. Yeah. Now in this role, um, as a pastor, you have several jobs you do i'm sure mm -hmm. what would you say is a role that you are it's a sweet spot for you something you really enjoy oh, okay. and maybe what's something that like you're having to you're having to learn a little bit more about so our church is considered a church replant so it was an existing church and then um so i was endorsed by the north american mission board about uh -huh. four years ago oh, actually about three years ago mm -hmm. and then um and we started a a, a um, official replant process of reaching out to the community and then learning how to um, um, have like a defined target group. So right now we're trying to reach the youth of the neighborhood because we believe that that's the future. And so yeah. as of this year, we started a youth group of about 20 kids. Um, it started during the pandemic when um, a lot of the neighborhood uh, people were struggling. So we started the food pantry and then started wow. uh, giving out, uh, distributing food to neighbors. Yeah. So they trusted us with their family members, their kids. And so this year, or last year, we started a youth group of about 20 kids. Almost all of them are from wow. unchurched backgrounds and that's wow. been a great blessing. So that's a sweet spot, um, yeah. seeing lives be changed and, yeah. and, um, and teenagers come to believe in Jesus and, yeah. and getting to baptize them and disciple them. That's awesome. Yeah. What What's a role you feel like you're still growing in? I didn't, so I don't have a title of a youth pastor, mm. but I have to like put on different hats. So oh, we have yeah, like youth yeah, yeah. nights, we have yeah. to um, function as a youth pastor. And yeah. then there's also the senior pastors. As a church replant, we have older members. Yeah. Um, so discipling older members is very oh, different sure. than reaching out to teenagers in LA. Yeah. Uh, so putting on different hats is, is a challenge, but it's also fun as, at the same time. It's, it's a yeah. blessing. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, these two questions are interrelated. What do you think is something that a pastor cannot learn in seminary? You only learn it doing ministry in the church. What's something like that? Perseverance in mm. a difficult context. Of course, seminary is hard. Like, yeah. it, it's been a challenge for me. When I first began seminary, I was struggling. My grades weren't very high. When I first started my journey, it took me about nine years to graduate with my MDiv. Wow. But one thing I did learn through seminary was that like the professors were so gracious with spending time with me to help me with my, with my Greek and, and Hebrew. Eventually I made it. Um, but being a pastor of a local church, it's a different type of perseverance um, that's relational. There's spiritual um, yeah. attacks that you get and just yeah. um, fighting through that and really focusing on Jesus and, and the gospel mission. Yeah. Uh, that's, been, that's been a learning experience as a pastor. Yeah. Now, the opposite side of that, what do you think is something that like a student has to learn in seminary? Like, What's that one thing that if a student leaves seminary, they don't have it, they've kind of, they've wasted their time? I, one, one of the things that I love about Gateway Seminary, in my experience, is I came in thinking that I had my thoughts about theology, church history, all of that that's already mm. developed. Mm. But as I was studying and, and, and studying different perspectives as, as well as um, reading different authors, I began to realize that um, there's things that I don't know and there's room for growth for me as a yeah. student of, of the Bible. And yeah. um, Gateway Seminary, so seminary was a safe place for me to ask questions that are difficult without like having to get in get into arguments or anything yeah. like that it's a classroom context so you get to ask questions and see how the professor answers so those things i think is a great value that's yeah. added through seminaries yeah that's awesome uh my last question for you mm -hmm. if you could what advice would you give to yourself like your first year in ministry first year in ministry yeah um don't go it alone have mentors mm -hmm. have friends um have people who will keep you accountable yeah. and share life with. And, but yeah, don't go alone. That's good. That's good. Min Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>